Okay, so this is going to be my all-in-one build a 500 gigabyte drive from scratch. I don't know if you can see this on here, but it's a 500 gigabyte drive marked right about there. It's hooked up by USB to the front of this console here. It's in my desktop like this because I needed the power from the uh, from one of the internal drives here to ensure that it builds correctly this time for the video. And we're gonna come over here and I'm gonna walk you through the steps of basically how to take an empty drive. So this drive has no partitions on it. I'll show you what I mean in a second. This is disk manager. And right here is the 500 gigabyte disk. You can see that it's blank and it's actually a MBR disk. So we're gonna download all the tools we need to build a new Xbox One 500 gigabyte drive. So in order to do that, we need to download two things. We're gonna to need to download OSU1, and this will be the, basically this is the offline update tool. And we're gonna put this on the hard drive in such a way that we will be able to, it'll be able to draw from those update files to build the hard drive. Okay, so we're just gonna copy and paste that into the URL. And here's where we download it. You can see the download is almost four gigabytes. I'm not gonna download it because I've already done that. I have uh, this guy right here. Yeah, it's already downloaded here. And I've already extracted it. So I use 7-zip a lot. I right click it, select 7-zip, open archive. And here is our system update. And you just click that and click extract and I extract it right to here. And this is a result of that, a bunch of files here. On the other thing here, the other thing you need to download, close this, is my partitioning scripts. Particularly these are the partitioning scripts for Linux and Windows, it includes both. And we're gonna paste this in. Give it a second for the download button to appear. Click download file. And this one's much smaller, it's under a megabyte. We'll save this. Now, I'm not gonna download this either because I've already got it here ready to go. So here's the most recent one, the four, the one I just showed you the download. And again, you'd open that with 7-zip or something similar and extract this. So this is where I extract it to again. And on the lowest level, there's a bunch of Linux shell scripts. And then there's a Windows directory which has all the Windows scripts. Now we're gonna remember, I think right here, we wanna remember this path because for the next step, we're gonna to have to run a command line utility. Well, run this script here actually, run the, right, this one. Run the create xbox drive.bat. So we're gonna remember this URL. So we can click here on our bar up here and right click that and say copy. And the first thing we're gonna to wanna to do is open an administrative command prompt. The quickest way I find to do that is to search for a program type CMD and then right click it and select run as administrator, the second option here. There's of course a few ways to do this, but it seems to be the quickest way for me anyways. All right, and so we now we have our prompt and this is why I had you copy the URL here. Again, just right click, copy. Uh, Basically, we want to paste that in here. So the first thing we're going to want to do is I'm running I have a couple drives in this machine, but my scripts are currently on my M drive So the first thing we want to do is switch to the M drive More than likely you won't have to do this. You probably just have a C drive and that's it. The next thing we want to do is type CD and edit paste in the the uh, The path that we copied earlier and enter and Then in here we now have the script where we can run directly, which is the create Xbox One drive. You start typing create and then hit the tab key when you're ready and it'll auto fill in the script. Now we'll hit enter on this and the rest, thing, the rest of this process here is just following the prompts and doing what it asks. So for instance here, we're just gonna hit any key. We're gonna select our disk three as determined by this here being our 500 gigabyte disk. We don't wanna do these other guys. Now it says that we're going to erase our data. Uh, we're going to erase the data, which is fine because there is no data on it. I'm going to hit yes on that. Now here, for the most part, 
if you're building a drive from scratch, you always want to pick B, even if you have a one terabyte or a two terabyte drive. The only time you'd want to build a one or a two terabyte drive directly is if you already have one built and working and you want to just copy the files over to another drive. Maybe it's a solid state drive or something like that. But you can't build a non 500 gigabyte drive from scratch. So I figured I'd point that out. If you did have a system and you wanted to put a two terabyte drive in it and you don't have a drive to begin with, you'd run this process to create a 500 gigabyte drive first and then see my other video for upgrading 500 to two terabyte. Okay, so we'll pick B here. And it's saying, do you want to reset? And the answer to this is no. You basically always want to pick no there for the reset. You can ignore all these windows here too. Just hit X past all this. If we come over and check our disk management here, we can see most of the work is already done. Okay, the script is complete. The time it takes for this thing to finish is pretty varied, but I'd say this took about five minutes or so to finish. Uh, all these autoplay windows here, we can just click X on. And this is what we want to see, basically. We want to see all these GUIDs matching exactly, and we want to see these sizes matching exactly. And if you see that, you know you're pretty much good to go. And the last thing it says is just press any key to finish the script. And so there you go, and you can see the, the drive here. If you don't see this here, and you don't see all this here, sometimes what you might want to do is just rerun the script a second time. I've seen a couple occasions where some step got missed or got, I, I don't know, skipped somehow along the way or trumped by another command or just something went wrong along the way and you didn't wind up with this exact result. So it's safe enough to run the script a second time because it will destroy everything and start fresh again. And there's a chance that the next time around it'll get everything right. In this particular case, I was fine on my first try here, but I've had a couple times, especially when you have a brand new drive that's just came out of the box. This drive isn't new, but um, it's been formatted a few times. Okay, so the next thing we're gonna do is put our update files into the X partition or the X drive. The reason we're going to do this is we want to attempt to have the system boot with this drive and update from itself and not require using a USB stick. This is an optional step. If you just have a USB, st uh, a USB stick with the OSU1 that you downloaded put on to a USB stick, you could just use that instead. Uh, let's see, so that's this guy here. What I mean is if you unzip this osu1.zip and put this system update folder onto a flash drive, which I may wind up having to do in this case, then you don't necessarily need to copy your files over to the X drive here. But I usually like to cover my bases either way. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to my X drive here, the system update drive, and I'm going to create two folders. And what this is going to simulate is what the Xbox One does to when it downloads an update from the internet from Microsoft. It puts that update into the system update partition. And basically it downloads this. So we're going to do edit, select all, and we're going to copy everything into the A folder here. 
we don't want to retain the system update folder. We just want the content of what was in there. Now again, this step is optional. However, you probably still want to have one of these. So this is just a 16 gigabyte USB stick. And on this particular, see, I'm actually going to plug this in. Okay, so this is our USB stick. Yeah, which is an F drive. So if you click the F drive, you'll see here's the system update folder from the OSU one. And here's our where we put the stuff off. I, I keep a copy of OSU one and two and the factory reset downloads all on the one drive here so I could switch back and forth. But just to show you, this should be formatted as NTFS. It is. So the other two for the clone and for the Ubuntu can be FAT32. The OSU one or the offline update tool needs to be NTFS. Okay, so going back to our system update partition here, we've copied the contents of the OSU one folder to A, and now we want to put, well, one thing we want to do is we want to remove this update, we're going to cut it, and we want to stick this right here on the lowest level, updater dot xvd and then we'll leave all the other files intact and we'll do a select all on this copy and we're going to put a copy of all these files into the b partition the xbox one sometimes looks in a sometimes it looks in b it's not always clear as to when it's going to be looking for one or the other so generally the idea is put the updates in both Okay, there we go, copy is complete. So now A and B have the same files in each folder. Okay, so this drive is ready to be disconnected and brought over to, let's see if we can do this while this is open. It's probably not. Close these down, let's close this down, let's close this down. And try that one more time. Yeah, so sometimes after uh, after doing everything we did there, it doesn't allow you to directly disconnect the drive. So what I usually do to get around this is open disk management. right click our disk here and put it offline this shouldn't affect the drive in any way other than force dismount all the partitions now we can I think we might even be able to turn it back online again and now safely remove there we go Quick pro tip. Okay, so we're gonna take that drive now and put it on our Xbox One and boot it up and we'll show you the result. Okay, I wanted you to see here, this is the system, it's all hooked up. This is the drive I was showing you before, connected to Windows. We copied all the OSU One files over, formatted the drive. And I just gotta finish putting the front panel on and the top on here so you can see this thing in action here. So first we'll put our buttons so we can turn it on. Let me unplug the power so it doesn't turn on while I'm trying to fill here. Now we're going to connect up. Push this back a little bit just in case this falls off, which it does from time to time. Drop this top case on. The Wi-Fi board connected. We're going to hook up our audio connection here. And we're going to wire up, we're going to add our antenna connection. Uh, just a note, this particular system, I, I probably won't show anything on it, but I had to re-solder one of these on. I actually have some replacement of those connectors. But when you, uh, when you disconnect that connector, 
it's important that you just pull straight forward. It pops right off, but I, I, I've seen on two different occasions Xboxes where those those connectors are broken off and it it's one of the easier connectors to remove and it's difficult to fix. So you want to be careful with that. Uh, but it's pretty simple just to pull it back and not rip the connector off. But like I said, I've seen I've seen that happen a few times. I think what people probably try to do is pull the connector at an angle or something. Anyways, uh, so there we go. So we're going to power this machine up for the first time and see what happens. I've uh, changed the front LED light to red here as requested. Nothing particularly uh, amazing about that, but it is uh, part of the service that I offer. Okay, let's see how far we get. Yeah, with that preparing the console thing, probably uh, probably just erased all the files we copied over. Okay, I'm probably in for a world of pain here. I've never seen an E106 error before, and I was reading about E106 and 105. They seem to be new errors popping up, <clears throat> and I'm not quite sure what the cause is. This uh, machine is giving me a lot of grief. I I uh, knew it didn't boot. I replaced the LED here. I fixed the this cable here. This I was saying before. Uh, looks like the person ripped off that connector there, and ripped the the connector off the end of the cable. So I directly soldered this end of the cable here because normally when you take the Xbox One apart, you don't need to disconnect this cable. You can just take out the whole card if you had to, and just leave the cable connected. And um, and I repaired the front there. I already showed you the front part, but. It was that part of things, uh, and then the drive seemed to be bad as well. And now, after the usual reformats, I'm getting a new error I've never seen before. Anyway, so what I'm going to do is I have my OSU one uh, flash drive here, and we're going to pop that in the system and see if we can do some sort of troubleshooting here. So I'm going to do the offline system update. From what I've read, this. Uh, usually doesn't result in anything great, but who knows. So something about they're doing the offline update and it gets to 70% or something like that, reboots and they, they get an E105 error. I don't know. I am starting to think though, if this does work, I am starting to think that the step of copying, of basically creating the A and B folder on the system update partition is a waste of time. I did that on this system. I started up and immediately did a preparing console, which probably meant that it erased all the files on system update anyway. So I would just say you probably want to use my Windows partitioning script to partition it as a standard 500 gigabyte drive. Make sure that completes, make sure the GUIDs match up and the, and the partition sizes match up. And if they do, just call it quits there, install it in the Xbox One, and then just use a thumb drive to get the system up and running again. Yeah, you see. So it matches the, uh, the system LED. And that's actually the connect I'm doing as well. I'll show the connect all hooked up if I get everything working here. So you can see all the LEDs in red. Okay, so there you go. So there's proof that an E106, I just want to show you that I can now uh, set this guy up. Anyways, I'm going to go in and I'm going to actually add my account and everything to the system so we can try it out a little bit, make sure everything works okay. We're going to install a game from a disk and to play that game, just make sure the, the disk drive is working and a few other things. So we'll come back in a bit. Oops, got the right controller. The uh, network applet loads. Uh, what else to show here? Um, the, oh, system, storage. 
There's this one doesn't have a two terabyte drive. It's just a 500 uh, gigabyte fix, as you can see there. And uh, yeah, that's about it with that. Oh yeah, one more thing to show you, so I can also display the connect functionality here. There's me. You can see the connect works. The light on the front, and you can see that there's this tiny little light there. There's two, so there's two LEDs to change. One is the power light, the other is the camera light. And that's both modified to be red. We're going to load up a disc and see if the optical drive still works. We're going to throw in uh, Song of the Deep here, which installs pretty quickly. All right, so now we're going to put the disc in here, Song of the Deep, see if the optical drive functions. I like to test that before I send it back to the customer. And uh, for obvious reasons, I mean, you want to make sure everything works. And the game's beginning to install. It's going to tell me I need to do an update, I'm sure, as well. Right now, this was a, a completely uh, fresh drive. So there's nothing installed, which is why I'm doing this. Okay, and I was talking about the update for... I won't go through the whole thing, but I just wanted to show you it installing off the disk and the network. Again, a feature that I really like in the newer dashboard versions. So about two gigabytes used for this install here. So there we go. So we can see it's installing from the disk. And you can see the network works. Let's play Song of the Deep. All right, I just want to show you this loading up. We'll get down to the title screen here. Maybe we'll play it for a few seconds. We'll see. Another game I haven't played in a while, but you can see it works. Okay, so that's the making a new 500 gigabyte drive process. And you can see here everything working. And uh, that should do it. I'll see you in my next video.